People Who Died on Live TV Part 18 Any time that a person tunes into a daredevil performing a hair-raising stunt, there's a chance to witness something horrifying. The man in this video was just so good and calculated that you'd never expect things to go this wrong. It's not like Carl Walinda hadn't experienced tragic mishaps in the past. In 1962, while performing at the Shrine Circus with his family troupe, the Flying Walindas, he shattered his pelvis and lost two members to Fatal Falls. They were performing their infamous pyramid on a tightrope when it buckled. When Carl was so low, he really seemed to master his art. He once even performed a headstand on the tightrope from high above to a stunned crowd. On March 22, 1978, Carl performed a promotional tightrope walk between two towers 100 feet up in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Camera crews were ready, on the ground, and up high to capture the magic. They tragically captured something terrible instead. The winds really picked up and became unstable, pushing Carl off balance. He battled and battled to steady himself, but eventually gave in. He tossed the stick he used to maintain himself and tried to grab hold of the rope with his hands. Sadly, he missed and plummeted to the cement below. He was 73 years old. What made this video especially distressing was that the cameraman pointed the camera downward as Carl fell to his death. Another one even got a close-up shot of him on the ground. People Who Died Live Part 3 14,000 people filled an arena on May 23, 1999 to watch a huge pay-per-view wrestling match. They had no idea that they were about to witness a legend's death. 34-year-old Owen Hart had a huge following and had been a pro wrestler for over a decade, according to weight around 78 feet as the 14,000 spectators watched helplessly. He allegedly died on impact, and though I'm not convinced of that, I do think it's likely that he was at least knocked unconscious. His cause of death was internal bleeding as a result of blunt force trauma. At, uh, in Kansas City, uh, tragedy befell the World Wrestling Federation and all of us. Owen Hart was... Uh, set to make an entrance from the ceiling and uh, he fell from the ceiling and I have the unfortunate responsibility to let everyone know that Owen Hart has died Owen Hart has tragically died from that accident here tonight People Who Died on Live TV Trigger Warning On August 26, 2015, Allison Parker and Adam Ward began their day before the sun was up as they often did. Allison was an on-air journalist and Adam was her cameraman. Both worked for local news station WDBJ7 in Roanoke, Virginia. A little after 6.30 a.m., Allison began her live interview with Vicki Gardner, executive director of the Chamber of Commerce. At 6.45, a man aggressively charged the two women, drawing a Glock 19. Locals watched the television as 15 shots rang out. Toe-curling screams were heard as both women caught bullets. Soon, the camera dropped as Adam was also hit. It was a stark sight as the camera continued rolling, capturing more screams of agony. By the time help arrived, Allison and Adam were dead. Vicky survived. Back at the station, co-workers watching the footage recognized the mystery murderer. It was former disgruntled employee Vester Flanagan. Just after the shooting, he tweeted that Allison and Adam had gotten him fired by going to HR. He also took his own footage of the harrowing attack and posted it to his Facebook. Before police could apprehend him, he crashed his car and then did the same thing that he did to Allison and Adam to himself. People Who Have Died on Live TV Part 2 On July 8, 2011, firefighter Shannon Stone was excited to bring his son to the Texas Rangers baseball game. He saw the perfect chance to make the day even more special when outfielder Josh Hamilton threw the ball in his direction. As it drew closer, he leaned forward over the railing, attempting to snag it when he lost his footing. People at home and in the stands watched helplessly as gravity took hold, pulling him headfirst towards the concrete ground. A man next to him desperately tried to catch him but couldn't get a firm grip. Expressions melted from concern to absolute horror as he plummeted 20-plus feet. At first, it seemed like he might be all right. When paramedics rushed to his aid, he was alert and asking about his son. It was deceiving. He was experiencing a lucid interval where people appear to make a sudden recovery right before rapidly deteriorating. It's a phenomenon that's occasionally seen with head trauma. Tragically, he died while in transit to the hospital. 
People Who Died on Live TV Part 4 The year was 2007 in Phoenix, Arizona, and on a sunny, hot July day, the leading news story was a high-speed chase, but this doesn't end how you'd expect. In the era of 24-7 news capability, anything that offers viewers hits of adrenaline that might end bloody must be covered live at all costs. Two sets of journalists from competing news stations fired up their helicopters and got in the air as soon as possible to offer live aerial footage of police making chase of a runaway criminal. At this time, pilots often doubled as field reporters, which sounds to me like they had way too many responsibilities. This proved catastrophic. At around 12.46 in the afternoon, both helicopters collided mid-air. The impact was immense and could be heard on the ground. It caused both choppers to rapidly plummet towards Earth. There was black smoke and furious flames erupting like a detonating bomb. All four journalists died, likely at the moment that they impacted the ground. This quickly overshadowed the high-speed chase, and other news choppers in the air changed direction so that they could be the first to cover the catastrophe. People Who Died on Live TV Part 7 On August 23, 2010, disgruntled, recently fired cop Rolando Mendoza launched a half-baked revenge plot in Manila, Philippines. He hijacked a tour bus filled with 25 people who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was hoping to negotiate a chance at a fair hearing to discuss his recent job dismissal, but things took a very dark turn. He took all 25 passengers hostage, which prompted news crews to get to the scene and begin filming live. Mendoza and officers attempted negotiations for over 10 hours as the world watched. Everyone remained safe and alive at this time. Then, authorities arrested his brother, which enraged him. He began lining passengers up on foot and walked along the bus interior, shooting them dead one by one. Cameras continued rolling as people were seen buckling to the floor through windows. The driver realized that Mendoza would eventually kill him too, so he made a mad dash out of the door. He ran to officers yelling, they're all dead. This prompted them to close in on the bus. Mendoza shifted his attention to shooting police and bystanders. This shootout lasted for over 90 minutes, but finally came to an end when Mendoza was taken out with several bullets. In the end, nine people died and 13 were injured. This incident has become a blueprint of what not to do in a hostage crisis. People Who Died on Live TV Part 8 on July 9, 2016, the loved and famed matador Victor Barrio stepped into the ring at the Feria del Angel Festival cool as a cucumber. He had come a long way since his debut bullfight in 2008. He had perfected his craft, which looked more like an artful dance than a sport. His wife and entire family was eagerly watching from the stands, along with much of Mexico, watching on TV from their living rooms. Sadly, that day in July turned very dark in just moments. Lorenzo, an over one-ton bull, came charging at him with fury. Victor was able to outsmart him once, but he quickly came at him again, forcing his horns into his chest repeatedly. The sheer force plunged them through his tissue and lungs, perforating them. This left him vulnerable and open to further assault. Other matadors acted quickly to draw Lorenzo away, but it wasn't quick enough. In addition to his collapsed lungs, his aorta was severed and heart severely damaged. Anybody who witnessed the horrifying mishap knew that it was dire. There was nothing that could save him from bleeding to death. People Who Died on Live TV Part 9 February 18, 2001 was a very dark day. A horrifying tragedy aired live on television while millions watched. That afternoon in Florida was the popularly viewed annual Daytona 500. There were several fan-favorite drivers set to compete, including 49-year-old Dale Earnhardt. Also competing alongside of him was his son, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Through much of the first half, Earnhardt was a front-runner. Fans and announcers expressed their excitement as he led through 17 laps. Towards the end of the race, he lost his lead but managed to get back near the front. On the final turn of the final lap of the race, Earnhardt made contact with another driver, causing him to slide off course. As he tried to regain control, he smashed into yet another car. He slid up the track and impacted a retaining wall head-on. He was driving at an estimated speed of 160 miles per hour. The hood of the car severed from the force, causing it to ricochet back against the windshield over and over. The force also sent his car flying down a steep embankment. Tragically, he sustained fatal head injuries, including a basilar skull fracture, which happens at the base of the skull. He also had severe brain injuries. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. People Who Died on Live TV Part 10 In the 90s, Daniel V. Jones got harrowing news. He was both HIV positive and had cancer. 
As his symptoms worsened, he felt frustration with his HMO medical plan. As many of us know, these and other plans are known to make patients jump through hoops for treatment and are still sometimes denied. By April 1998, he was certain that he was going to soon lose his battle and decided to take matters into his own hands. On the afternoon of April 30th, he parked his Toyota truck on the Century Freeway in Los Angeles and climbed out with his dog and a shotgun. He dialed 911 on himself, hoping to gain media's attention, and it worked. Afternoon programs, including cartoons, were interrupted with live video feed focused on him. To escalate the matter further, he fired a few shots at inanimate objects, including his truck. As a result, the freeway was shut down. He pulled out a banner that read, HMOs are in it for the money. Live free, love safe, or die. He got inside of his truck and lit it on fire, but couldn't stand the flames. He ran out while still engulfed. Seconds later, he retrieved his firearm and used it on himself. It was clearly a fatal shot. Every single disturbing moment displayed on televisions all over LA. People Who Died on Live TV Part 11 On May 1st, 1994, people from all over the world tuned in to the San Marino Grand Prix. Unlike NASCAR races, the Grand Prix is a Formula One event which uses open cars that can reach higher speeds. This particular year was already marred by tragedy. Just the day prior during the qualifying race, Austrian driver Roland Rotzenberger died in a high-impact collision. Gearing up for the race was fan favorite, three-time champion Brazilian driver Ayrton Senna. As the event kicked off, it didn't take long for calamity to strike. Two drivers collided, sending soaring debris into the crowd. Luckily, both men survived. The race continued after a brief pause, and Senna began making great time, which established him as one of the front runners. He rounded lap 6 and headed into 7 at his full race speed, estimated to be around 192 miles per hour. One moment, everything seemed fine, and the next, he was running straight off of the track. The crowd and viewers watched in disbelief as he struck an unprotected concrete barrier, making an ominous, shattering sound. Time stood still as people watched with the desperate hope of seeing him move. After around 10 seconds, his head lifted slightly, only to slump back down. Tragically, he never moved again. His right front wheel shot up at impact and struck the front of his head. He sustained a fatal head injury. People Who Died on Live TV Part 12 Krista McAuliffe was a teacher who went above and beyond for her students. For the most part, she lived an ordinary life. But in the mid-80s, something happened that changed everything. She entered a contest that she never dreamt of winning. She was just one in over 11,000 entries. Much to her surprise and delight, she made the top 10 and was invited to partake in a ceremony with the vice president. It was there that she was announced as the winner of the Teacher in Space program. She took a leave of absence from teaching and began extensive training. January 28, 1986 was the big day. She boarded the Challenger space shuttle with six others, while countless people, including her parents and students, watched. Everything appeared fine at takeoff, but 73 seconds in, at an altitude of 48,000 feet, the shuttle broke apart and began a rapid descent. Some say that everyone died in the air, while other experts believe that they died upon impact around two minutes later. The teacher who was selected as Krista's backup went on to become a successful professional astronaut, despite watching the tragedy in person. People Who Died on Live TV Part 14 Trigger Warning Many of the deaths that we've witnessed on live TV are the product of 24-hour news channels. After all, live news events are completely unwritten. Covering things like hostage crisis, attacks, and high-speed chases are bound to go terribly wrong, and there's no telling when. That's exactly what led to Fox News having to issue an apology on September 28, 2012. They were covering a high-speed chase in Arizona. Even the police backed off when they realized the danger. In place, they opted to plant undercover surveillance and tailed him from the sky in a helicopter. Jordan Romero already had a warrant for his arrest when he stole an SUV at gunpoint earlier that morning. He weaved like a madman through traffic, sped down commercial areas, and ran red lights. When he blew past a slurry of undercover officers, he opened fire on them through the driver's window. Some believed that he himself had a death wish. Finally, after hours, he appeared to give up. He parked the SUV with Fox News cameras zooming in on him. Even the on-air reporter expressed concerns. He took off running, tumbled to the ground, but quickly jumped back on his feet. He was carrying something in his hand, but you couldn't tell what from the camera's angle. It was a gun. He walked towards some shrubbery and immediately unalived himself in the head as hundreds of thousands watched. Just not sure about this. He's getting things out of the vehicle, clearly. Uh, it doesn't appear that there's anyone else with him. Well, you know, you wait for the end of these things, and then you worry about how they may end. 
There's nobody else around him. Um, this makes me a little nervous, I gotta tell you. No, get off, 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 get off it, get off it, get off it! People who died on live TV. This video is of Tommy Cooper, a famed comedian who struggled with an unhealthy lifestyle. In 1984, he was in the middle of a performance when he suffered a massive heart attack. He buckled to the floor and fell backwards. He is heard letting out several groans of death as the audience laughs hysterically. They believed it was part of the show when really, he was dying before their eyes. Take a look. <laughs> People Who Died on Live TV Part 16 Some people take sports very seriously. So seriously that they even predict that they will die talking about them. That's exactly what happened to Franco Scolio. Franco was crazy about Italian football. When he was young, he played soccer. Then he coached it. And once he retired, he got paid to talk about it. He even told people that he would likely die while talking about it. Sadly, he predicted his own death. On October 3rd, 2005, he was on an Italian television show having a very passionate debate with the president of the Genoa soccer program. All of a sudden, he just fell silent. The other man, who was joining the show over the phone, just kept talking. Franco slumped down in his chair and threw his head back. The others in the room took notice of what was happening and the program quickly cut away. It was in that moment when he slumped down that he suffered a massive and fatal heart attack. People Who Died on Live TV Part 6 On the morning of July 15, 1974, a 29-year-old reporter began her live, on-air community affairs segment for a Florida news station. This day felt different to both her co-workers and interviewee who was waiting off camera. She began by reading a news report, which was not typically part of her duties. She touched on three national news stories, followed by a local shooting at a restaurant. Immediately following, a film reel and interview revolving around the local story was set to play, but unfortunately jammed. Had that not happened, it's possible that this wouldn't have become the dark day that it was. The reporter, whose name was Christine Chubbuck, shrugged her shoulders and with a face void of emotion said, In keeping with WXLT's practice of presenting the most immediate and complete reports of local blood and guts, TV40 presents what is believed to be a television first. She pulled out a Smith & Wesson revolver and within a couple of short seconds used it on herself. The segment was immediately cut, but it was too late. People all over the area had unwillingly witnessed her shocking death. The local police received dozens of calls from viewers while the station received inquiries as to whether it was all staged. Sadly, it was not. People Who Died on Live TV Part 17 It began as an ordinary Tuesday morning. The streets of Manhattan played their usual soundtrack of motor vehicles and the hustle and bustle of people heading into work. The weather was calm, kicking off with a temperature of 65 degrees. At 8.46 a.m., everything changed. Programs were interrupted with live feed of the World Trade Center. We understand that there has been a plane crash. This just in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. But we're joined by the entire network just to show you some pictures at the foot of New York City. As Matt just mentioned, we have a breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center. American Airlines Flight 11 deliberately crashed into the North Tower. Then, at 9.03, United Airlines Flight 175 struck the South Tower. No matter what channel you turned to, you couldn't escape it. We were witnessing the demise of all 157 people on board both planes live, but that wasn't the end of it. The many cameras watched as dark, ominous smoke and flames discharged from the hit floors, and soon they picked up something even more disturbing. At first, it almost looked like birds from the distance. The sound of shattering glass echoed as bodies hit the pavement. People were falling from the towers. It's unclear whether they jumped to avoid the fire or fell because they were disoriented. 
At 9.59 a.m., the daylight was swallowed whole as the South Tower collapsed. People blocks away had to take cover as the rubble and smoke rolled violently through the streets. At 10.28, the North Tower followed. In total, the events claimed the lives of 2,996 people. It was the deadliest mass event caught on live TV in American history.